recognize as the Vice Chairman of the full committee, Ms. Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And to the Commission, I want to say thank you for being here um, and, and offering your testimony. As you all know, we've got questions and uh, we want to move right on to them. I think that the recent actions taken by the FCC have really raised more questions uh, about your scope and your reach and your authority. And I will also say about transparency. Chairman Wheeler, I will tell you, I do not think it is acceptable for the Commission to pass a net neutrality rule before the American people have the opportunity to find out what is in it. And that was disappointing to us. Releasing a draft final order should have been a part of the rulemaking process. And it is disappointing that it was not. Every dollar you spend is a taxpayer dollar Every action that you take affects the American taxpayer. So that lack of transparency is incredibly disappointing. Uh, I'm sure that also you're hearing from Netflix and some of the other stakeholders who have been very disappointed in what they found out once they started to read the 322 word filled pages. Um, I will tell you also as a former state senator from Tennessee and someone that worked on the telecommunications and interactive technology issues there. I was terribly disappointed to see the action of the commission to choose, to choose, to take a vote and choose to preempt state laws in Tennessee and North Carolina that restrict municipal broadband entry. Uh, these are decisions that should be made by their state legislators. Your actions there are disappointing, and we have questions about them. And, Mr. Chairman, I yield back my time. Anyone else on the Republican side seeking time? The uh, next questioner will be the gentlelady from Tennessee, Ms. Blackburn, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, Chairman Wheeler, I will just add uh, my viewpoint of when you look at our economic revolutions in society, whether it was agriculture or the industrial, the technology, the information, successful revolutions are about freeing up, not restricting. And what we're looking at right now is the vantage point from, that you all are coming from is taking away and restricting, not freeing up. Chairman, uh, Mr. O'Reilly, Commissioner O'Reilly, let me come to you for a moment and talk taxes. You and I uh, penned an op-ed uh, back in July calling for the need for a cost-benefit ben analysis and uh, really looking at what had been said by uh, PPI, Free Press, uh, Professor Farber at, uh, you know, what they thought would happen with taxes. New York Times agreed with that. I want to hear from you a little bit. 30 seconds worth about uh, why we should have had a cost-benefit analysis and what you think the outlook is. So I believe that we should do better at the FCC on cost-benefit analysis, and this is a perfect case. I think the cost None was done. This is a, a woeful job that was done in this instance. Um, we're talking about hypothetical harms and real-world uh, impacts on businesses. Yeah. But in terms of your question on taxes, um, I would say that I would switch it more to taxes and fees because the question has been on universal fees and what happens in universal service going forward. The chairman has made very clear that, it, that the item in and of itself before us does not impose universal service. That is just something we're going to punt for about a month or two, and we're waiting for the joint board to okay. see this is something that's going forward. We are going to see those fees uh, in, in the months ahead. Okay, Commissioner Pai, you gave an interview this week and stated that there was going to be a tax on broadband and the commission is waiting for a joint board to decide April 7th how large that tax is going to be. You want to expand on that? Thank you for the question, Congresswoman. Uh, the order suggests that the joint board is going to make a recommendation on April 7th. Uh, the order also says that a short deadline, quote unquote, might be appropriate. So at some point very soon, the, sh the joint board is going to recommend uh, whether and how to increase these fees that are going okay. to be assessed on broadband for the first time. In addition, it's not just the USF fees, as uh, Commissioner Riley's pointed out. It's also state and local fees. For example, state and uh, property taxes. Uh, localities also impose taxes. D the District of Columbia imposes an 11 percent tax on gross receipts. These are all fees that are going to have to be paid by someone. It's going to be paid by the consumer at the end of okay. the day. Okay. Uh, Chairman Wheeler, rate regulation. <clears throat> I read something from Professor Lyons of Boston College 
and he said Title II is fundamentally a regime for rate regulation. And then uh, we're looking at another thing which he said about a person which might include a large company can file a complaint with the FCC under Section 208 if they don't think their charges are just and reasonable. So you have denied that the FCC is going to get into rate regulation through this net neutrality order, but I understand that the order does not explicitly state that the FCC will be regulating rates on the date the rules are effective, but what about the first time that a complaint is filed with the FCC under Section 208 because the party feels that their rates are not just and reasonable? Uh, what's the remedy going to be? And isn't it true that the FCC will be engaged thereby in de facto rate regulation? So thank you, Congresswoman. Um, I hope somebody files that kind of a complaint. As you know, um, there hasn't been a complaint filed for 22 years in the wireless voice space, despite the fact that this authority, same kind of authority exists. If somebody apply, files that kind of a complaint, I don't want to prejudice a decision, but I will assure you that there will be a process that will look at that and that will develop, I would hope, a record that would make it very clear that the FCC is not in the consumer rate regulation business. Mr. Chairman, don't you think what you just said about there hasn't been a complaint filed in that space for 22 years proves the point that the Internet is not broken, this space is not broken, and it does not need your oversight and guidance? No, that's was I was referring to wireless voice, not to, not to broadband. And I, but I think the key thing is, you know, you cited your Okay, your let me cut you off there. I've got one uh, question for Commissioner Clyburn. And I want to go to the Lifeline and USAC program with you. You've advocated restructuring and rebooting that program, and you've had several supply-side reforms aimed at eliminating incentives for waste, fraud, and abuse. And the FCC's Inspector General, as you know, has performed a review of the verification process on this and recommended that the FCC may improve the effectiveness of the warnings that it gives subscribers and reduce the level of fraud in that program. We've had hearings on, on this, and I want to work with you on it. Thank you. And is it true that under the current system, the penalty for a subscriber defrauding the program by having multiple phones is to lose the subsidy for that for those phones, all but one. They get to keep one, and then the carrier is prosecuted. And I tell you why your answer is important. You all are talking about getting into broadband, and then in addition to the phones, and you got to reform all of this I, before you talk about expanding. I totally agree. Uh, and one of the reasons why I set out five points for reform is because I recognize two things. One, we need to eliminate all incentives and all existing waste, fraud, and, uh, and, and uh, those abuses. We need to do that, and the key way to do that is to get those providers out of the certification business. They will no longer uh, green light uh, yeah. customers. We need to and prosecute think, the user, and, and not that, the And we have yeah, un under, uh, with, with guidance uh, uh, from my colleagues, and while I was acting chair, I yield back. My time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chair. The gentlelady yields back. The chair now recognizes the.